nothing says 70s quite like a switchblade fight over a game of pinball. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the 2021 supernatural thriller, The Black Phone. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. The Black Phone stars Mason Thames, Madeline McGraw, and Ethan Hawke, and was directed by Scott Derrickson. Set in 1978, it tells the story of 13-year-old Finney Shaw, played by Mason Thames, who's kidnapped by a masked killer known only as The Grabber. As somebody in the film review space, and uh, somebody who plans out her review schedule an entire year in advance, I usually have a pretty good idea of movies that are coming out. So, when The Black Phone first came to my attention via a TV commercial last fall, it certainly piqued my interest. Not only had I somehow missed the pre-production and trailer drop phase of this film, but it also seemed like it would be right up my alley. A period piece supernatural thriller with one hell of a premise was enough to sell me almost immediately, but then I saw that it was based on a short story by Stephen King's son, Joe Hill, and I knew that this was going to make it onto my most anticipated movies list for the year. Stephen King's short stories always tend to translate into excellent feature-length films, and that King family tradition continues here with The Black Phone. It's got a simple enough story, focusing on a string of unsolved kidnappings sweeping a Denver suburb. Our protagonist, Finney, becomes the latest kidnapping victim, and we watch as he tries to escape and survive the ordeal. That abduction plot alone is tense and engaging, but then it gets a bit of a supernatural flair added to it. Finney begins receiving mysterious phone calls on the disconnected phone that's in the basement he's being held in, only to discover that the calls are coming from the ghosts of the grabber's previous victims, who are trying to ensure that Finney doesn't end up like them. Like I said before, it's a pretty simple story, but it's just so satisfyingly structured. It's tense and exciting throughout, but the way everything ends up coming together is just sublime and takes it all to another level of enjoyment. When it comes to horror movies or thrillers, the characters are often the make or break factor. A great premise can only take you so far. You need to care about your victim protagonist. You need to feel like they're a real person and be able to sympathize with them and their situation. Or, on the flip side, you need a villain who's so compelling that you want to see them succeed at whatever horrible things they're doing. Whichever option you prefer, it's still very dependent on well-written and well-acted characters. Those two things are not always easy to come by in genre films, and are even more rare when the leads are kids. But the black phone pulls it off. Mason Thames is excellent as Finney, believably portraying the smart but conflict-avoiding character at the center of the story. His character arc may be a tad predictable, but it's incredibly satisfying. Equally satisfying, and slightly less predictable, is his more outspoken younger sister, Gwen. Madeline McGraw gives an entertainingly convincing and scene-stealing performance, and I kind of wish we saw even more of her character. There are a handful of minor characters who are all fine, but our other main player is Ethan Hawke as the Grabber. He just exudes creepiness. He's got this unsettling demeanor and interactions with his victims. We get glimpses of implied perverseness that just make him even more skeezy than you already expect from a guy who pretends to be a magician to snatch kids. And then, of course, there's the mask. Masks are creepy to begin with. They hide your identity and your emotions, and the big grin plastered on the face of this mask is bad enough. But then you've got the interchangeability of the Grabber's mask. Pieces of it can come off and be swapped out. Sometimes he just wears the top of the mask, other times just the bottom. The possible combinations prevent us and Finny from ever growing accustomed to it. With a role like this, it'd be easy to phone it in, but Hawk really puts some effort into this one. What he loses in facial expression, he makes up for in voice alteration, ranging from false friendly to downright menacing. The Grabber isn't the most original of characters, but he's definitely a memorable one. The Black Phone is a very well-paced and taut thriller. There are a handful of characters and elements that don't really amount to much, but they don't take away from the tension either. 
you could classify this as a horror movie. And it does have a handful of jump scares, but this is much more of a thriller with supernatural elements. It's not really a slow burn, but it's also not a traditional horror movie either. This is much more character-driven and, at times, emotional than you might anticipate, even after watching the trailers. With the atmospheric tone and spot-on late 70s setting, the Black Phone is a crowd-pleasing, multi-layered foray into retro neighborhood horror with a bit of a ghostly twist. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. The biggest pro is definitely the story. As most of you probably know, I'm a really big fan of Stephen King, and so I was pretty excited when I saw that this was based on a short story by his son, Joe Hill. Although Hill certainly has his own writing style, there are, understandably, a lot of similarities between his work and his father's. And much like King's short stories, this story translates remarkably well to the big screen. It's a simple and well-done abduction thriller, but then there are little supernatural elements added that balance things out and add a layer of ghostly thrill to it all. It never goes too far with that, and although the supernatural components seem pretty real within the story, you could easily argue that this film has a more psychological slant to it. The second pro has got to be the characters. That's definitely not something that I say all that often for a horror movie or thriller, especially one that has two kids as leads, but this film somehow manages to pull it off. Great thrillers need more than just a good premise. They need characters for you to latch onto and care about. And the brother-sister duo of Finney and Gwen definitely fits that bill here. And then on top of our believable and entertaining protagonists, we've got the unsettling and fairly sinister villain, the Grabber. Much like the story itself, he's a simple and straightforward character, but the more you watch, the more little details stand out that make you realize that there's more going on than you might initially think. Pro number three is the tone. This is a creepy and very tense movie. Some may call it a horror film, and it definitely has horror elements, but I do think people going into this expecting a horror movie will be a little disappointed. Even with its ghostly components and classic masked villain, it's much more of a thriller than anything else. But that really works for this story. It's got some dark and unsettling aspects, but they're nicely balanced with occasional moments of humor, but also this general underdog vibe. On the con side, the biggest issue is what I'm gonna call the dead ends. So what I mean by this is that there are a number of characters or plot threads that get introduced but don't really go anywhere or get explored or finalized in any sort of way. Finney and Gwen's father falls into this category, as do the basis for certain aspects of Gwen's abilities. Now, this is something that isn't super uncommon when it comes to short stories turned films, because in a short story, there isn't time to explore all of these ideas, but laying the groundwork for them helps to create the illusion of a more comprehensive story. Unfortunately, not fleshing those things out in the film makes it feel like there are some loose ends. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying The Black Phone or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy in one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give The Black Phone four out of five paws. It's a creepy and taut thriller with an engaging story, excellent performances, and enough supernatural elements to keep you on your toes. I would recommend The Black Phone to fans of Joe Hill, or more likely, fans of Stephen King. It probably comes as no surprise that a story written by King's son would have some similarities to his father's work. So if you like Stephen King's style, and especially some of the better, more recent Stephen King film adaptations, then I think you'll find a lot to like in this one too. I should note though that this is a thriller first and foremost. It does have some horror elements, but if you go into this looking for a scary movie, then I think you might end up a bit disappointed. If you liked The Black Phone, I would recommend Dr. Sleep. This is the sequel to The Shining and is adapted from a Stephen King novel, so there's the obvious King family connection to begin with. But both films seem to focus on a character who has The Shining, and both also feature an unsettling, kid-snatching villain who dresses like a magician. If you're interested in another 70s set film about a kidnapping, you might want to watch The Lovely Bones. 
It's another dark and unsettling story, but leans much more into supernatural elements and is more of a fantasy drama than a thriller. And if you want something a little more classically scary, I'd suggest you check out Sinister. Like The Black Phone, it was directed by Scott Derrickson, and it also stars Ethan Hawke in a slightly different kind of role. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen The Black Phone? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite movie based on a short story? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe or add it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.